really happy to be here with Sarah. Um, I feel like Sarah, you and I do similar things. We have a similar heart and we have similar kind of business marketing skills. So we kind of, that's why, you know, I say authentic, I don't care about whatever language, but you talk about humane marketing and, and there are other cool terminology that I want you to bring into this conversation. So we are definitely kindred spirits. So I feel like the, those who are watching this and listening to this will get a lot out of this conversation. Um, I'll just, yeah, I've, I've really appreciated your work over the years. I think you have um, awesome content, which will be linked below. Um, but I'll let you introduce yourself, how you like to, to talk about it these days. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much for having me, George. And, and yes, totally kindred spirits. And we've been in, in each other's orbits for a long time. So I'm Sarah Zinacroce. I'm based in Switzerland. So that's probably one difference. I'm like on the other side of the world. And that's where I was born and raised. So I'm 100% uh, Swiss. But, um, you know, with the accent, people kind of already that. always wow. confused, uh, are a little bit confused. So uh, I like to say that because it, it does make things different depending on where you grow up, right? And so, um, yeah, I come from this European background. And um, the story that I usually tell now, and that wasn't always the case, is my upbringing story. Because I found out, um, you know, and people were reflecting that back to me, that it's actually quite interesting. And I was always almost oh, oh, like ashamed of it. So I grew up in a, what I call now a hippie commune. So uh, my parents and uh, a bunch of friends, they bought an apartment building together. And then we each had our own apartment uh, in that building, but we had a lot of common space. Uh, we always had the doors open. Everybody was just walking in and out of each other's apartment and everything had to be decided together. So my parents had like, I think weekly or bi-weekly meetings. And so it was like a real commune, a mini commune, but it was a real commune community. A, a um, lot of experience with conflict resolution, I'm sure. <laughs> exactly. It's like, who's going to empty the compost or, you know, dig up the compost this year? Or who's going to, you know, cut the grass? Like all these conversations. And as a kid, to me, that was just like, that's how everybody lives. And then of course, as I grew up as a teenager, I'm like, people are like, why do people keep walking into your apartment? That's weird. So I noticed how, you know, my home was probably a bit different. And so it was kind of a story that I wanted to just lock away, had nothing, definitely nothing to do with business. It never came up in a business conversation. Until, you know, a few years ago when I had this kind of breakdown about marketing being the way it is and, and me not wanting to do it that way anymore. And then uh, finally, I'm like, well, I think I just need to come back to the values that I've been raised with. I've always been raised with, you know, these ethical values and uh, community values. And, and so it took for me to go back and actually, you know, kind of yeah embrace and and love that uh, growing up story and and so that's why I'm on my LinkedIn profile I now have hippie turned business coach and and yeah I really feel like I've I've come full circle so that's the story yes. I usually tell I haven't heard you tell that story before I I think it's awesome actually <laughs> um you. and I, I you know I I feel like the the environment I grew up in was probably fostered better mental health you know, mm, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and well-being then these days, there's so much isolation. You know, yeah. it's like it's like being isolated is, is as damaging to our not just our mental, but our bodies, our physical bodies as like I heard smoking or something like that. Right. Damages our body. So it's um, it, it, or damages the heart. It's anyway, I, I love that story. Um, and it's so interesting mm -hmm. because you're telling of the upbringing and how it has transformed your, your, your philosophies and your business. Like, I'm like, yeah, you know what, that actually, I have a childhood thing too. I'm not going to tell a long story, but basically as a kid, I always, this, this inquiry always niggled at me. I'm like, why do people go to work? Like <laughs> they seem like they're not having fun. They seem <laughs> like they're doing just to make money. And it's right. like, and I always questioned the adults, like, do they feel like they want to keep doing this? Okay. Even <laughs> as a kid, I kept quite, and then also in school, I kept questioning, why are we learning this? What's the point of learning this mm. 
trigonometry or whatever it is. Like, when am I ever going to use this kind of thing? And so like the question of purpose and calling was always so alive for me. And now I, now mm -hmm. that's why I say authentic marketing is the process of a business finding its calling. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that makes, so, so just by you telling the story, it kind of gave me permission to look at my own story and how it connects to my philosophy today. So I love that you are doing this and that you are telling this. And so can I just go in that direction a bit? I want to just, yeah, let's go. You, let's is go this there. something you help others do um, is to, to mine their experience for the story that makes their business message or marketing much more meaningful? Mm, yeah. I, I think what, um, recently what I've added to my coaching page is that I want to help people find their life's work. Ooh, um, I love it's that. really yeah. about this, not just a job, just like you just said, right? Like, why do people just have a job? Uh, I really do my best work with people who want to create their life's work. And so that means actually going back to, you know, what is your purpose? What is your passion? What is your calling? What is your why? All of these big questions that um, usually it's probably not the first business, right? Um, definitely wasn't for me with my LinkedIn consulting business. Uh, it was just a means to an end and, you know, kids were small. So I needed a flexible um, uh, kind of way to, to make a living. But then the, what I'm doing now um, with the humane marketing, uh, kind of hosting the humane marketing circle, the community. So really going back to my DNA, community is my, in my DNA. And so that is my life's work now. And so that's where I feel like I can support others to really, yeah, kind of like create something that they're, they always knew was in them and, and, and you know, help them kind of birth that um, into the online space. So, yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. I'm so glad you're you're doing this and people can tap you for that, um, that service. So, okay. Um, you've developed a framework that is pretty cool. I want you to show that to people. Yeah. Like physically, you actually have an image of it with you. <laughs> and uh, tell us about this. Tell yeah. us about this. No, we I always mention my son, Simon, because he's the one who designed it for me and he made me a mouse pad. And so it's really handy to just tell, hold up and show. So, so yeah. Um, we, we all need a son named Simon too. Like, that's great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically when I looked at the seven P's of marketing that we all know as marketers, right. And I'm like, well, they feel so outdated. So you first know? of all, I'm sorry mm. to interrupt you. Sorry about that. Go ahead. You said the seven Ps that we all know as marketers. I think a lot of the people watching this might not know what those are. Do you want to like quickly run through that? Right. Yeah. Okay. So so there's this concept. I'm, I'm going to yeah. risk <laughs> Rest my arm arms, by <laughs> <laughs> Um, There's this concept of seven Ps of marketing that um, came out in the 60s, um, I believe. And so they've been around for a long time right and yet if you go to most universities they still teach those seven p's and and so some of the p's um you know yes they're, they're just very needed in in marketing something like promotion or pricing yes we need to look at our prices right um but then there's also like for example the one that i kicked out was physical evidence and i'm like well in a world that's so online right now, you know, why do we need physical evidence still in the in the seven P's of marketing? Um, what we need more is, um, and that's how how actually my seven P's or the seven P's of humane marketing are so different, is that we need to start with ourselves. That we actually, um, and it's exactly the journey that I went on. I'm like, well, in order to be a good marketer, an authentic marketer, a humane marketer, um, we need to find ourselves first so that we can actually be authentic, right? It's like, well, how do you, how can you be authentic? You can't just copy someone else. You have to go to that story. And so that's why the first P is passion. So that's all about, well, finding your why, finding your calling. And then the second one is personal power. 
And that's about, you know, what's unique to you? How are you different from others? Your story, like we just discussed, your values. I talk about a lot about the worldview. So all of these things that make your marketing different from anybody else's marketing. Because unfortunately, and you know this, and probably your, uh, your viewers know this as well, it's like there's so much of the same out there that if we... If we don't take that uh, extra step and go into the inner realm and really find out, well, what is it? How am I different? Then, yes, we are going to sound like everybody else, right? So, yeah, those are the, that's how I looked at, um, I feel like that's what was wrong for me also with marketing is that we immediately went to the client. Everything was client-centered, right? That's the word that we so often hear. And yet that creates this, this scarcity um, approach because we always feel like we need more clients, more clients. Instead, if we start with ourselves, uh, then work on our abundance mindset, work on how, that we are good enough, right? If we start from a place of good enough and then actually think, okay, I'm going to be good enough. I'm going to put myself out there more, more of myself, more of my story then the right kind of people are going to resonate with that. And so it's a complete different energy than um, feeling like I have to chase after them. I and love I this. I can't tell you that how, how, how helpful this is because you're right. It's, um, it's sort of like this finding your, I call it authentic power or your, your inner authority um, and grounding your whole marketing and business based on that instead of um, like having no center and always like becoming a chameleon to what others want. Now, right. of course, there is there is a need for market research and, you know, meeting people where they're at, but it's, it comes from a place of strength. We, we, we yeah. become strong first before we can meet people where they're at in a, in a way that provides excellence also. Right. Um, yeah. And your, your, your idea about the story and the personal power is, um, is what filters in the right people. Like I call it energy signature. I mean, it's not, I'm not right. the one who come up with that term, but it's like, it's like, as we tell our stories or give our messages, um, do our marketing, we are transmitting this energy signature out there and, not everyone's going to, not everyone's going to latch onto the energy signature. Only some people, you know, won't. And then some people will like, oh my gosh, that that's right for me. So this yeah. is, so thank you. Thank you for, for the work that you're doing and kind of sharing this. Um, I also want to ask you about, since you talk about humane marketing, mm -hmm. I think that's really significant. And I want to, I want people to better understand what you mean by humane, because mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't usually talk about marketing as inhumane or humane, but you and I both know kind of what that means. So can you explain that? Explain what humane means and what's not yeah. humane, I guess. Yeah, it's a, um, there's an interesting story behind that as well. And I think it has to do with my personal power uh, because the minute I uh, published my first book, which is now called Marketing Like We're Human, but back then it was called The Gentle Marketing Revolution, right? So my term, everything I built over two years was all about gentle marketing. And then unfortunately, uh, two weeks after I published a book, I got a cease and desist letter. And so uh, somebody, uh, another gentle marketer basically just deposited that trademark and said, you cannot use that anymore. And so from there, I then had to obviously dark night of the soul, <laughs> you know, I kind Yikes, of- Yikes, I didn't know time. that. Wow. Yeah. And so from there, I had to then go and find a new term. And once I understood this whole thing about trademarking and, and all of that, I'm like, oh, there's not that many terms <laughs> that haven't already been used. And so it was quite um, challenging to find a, a new term that still had the same message, because obviously all my messaging was already there. I just needed to replace the word gentle by another term. And so I remembered um, the, you know, the social media dilemma, if you remember that documentary, and they were talking about the humane te uh, technology, the humane center for technology. And so I was really intrigued by that. And I was like, wow, 
you know, what, what, what if uh, this word humane doesn't just apply to technology, because clearly it meant, you know, using technology in a way that is human friendly, humane, uh, compassionate, et cetera. Uh, what if it also applies to marketing? And so uh, that that really then um, started uh, started uh, had me start to like look at my website again and go you know would this fit? And then I came to my homepage and I actually said let's bring back the hum human connection back to marketing. I'm like humane human you know it's all there so the signs were all there and so that's yeah. how how this um, story behind humane marketing. Um, happened and so really wow. to me it means gentle kind compassionate pro-human obviously um yeah all of these things mm. um you know just first of all that cease and desist stuff i and i just can't i mean you might know i don't know if you know this about me or a lot of the viewers know like i have such a uh, a passion for for encouraging people to hold loosely to ideas in terms of ownership of ideas like i have i'm never going to trademark anything i'm never going to copyright anything in fact all of my content is uncopyrighted i'm like mm -hmm. if you want to use exactly the same words i use if you want to take and take my entire book my all my books are uncopyrighted if you want to take any of my books and just publish it and call it your own go for it like literally mm -hmm. and don't even mention my name right that it's like it's it's like it makes it makes innovation creativity so dampen that like people are so holding on to certain words like this is mine and not yours and you cannot use it anyway that's that's my that's my own thing but i also mm -hmm. think that humane marketing is powerful because there are certain terminologies in in marketing that it, as we start looking at these terms people use we're like what like oh my gosh that's true why are we using these terms can you tell us more about that i i want to yeah lean into that a little bit why are we using you you mean other terms that like like terms such as you know a uh, target audience oh you know, yeah lean, yeah like that, the that inhumane kind of terms yes yeah. yes yes yeah yeah once you obviously once you use a, a word like humane then you start to actually really be picky about language and every you know sense of the of the words that we use and and just recently, I published a blog post um, about humane marketing words that we love. So you know, words like kindness, compassion, and all um, uh, ethically ethical, and and all of those. But then also at the bottom of the list, people ask me, well, what about all the inhumane words like target audience and squeeze page and sales funnel? And you know, there's tons. Once you start to really kind of be mindful or aware you're like oh my god like what's with these words that we're using and words so, yeah that are kept i mean especially when you use these words to like plan your strategy and to talk with others about it maybe you have a team or not or just even in your own mind that's how you relate you relate to your audience as a target audience right you know and and you relate to well, the, the the sales funnel. The idea is you you they're just numbers. You just manipulate them along this pathway until they pop out with profit or something like that. Exactly. Sort of like the idea, and it's like mm -hmm. words matter because it's how yeah. we relate to one another. And yeah. um, instead of sales funnel, let's talk about client journey, for example, or you right. talk about gentle sales path, which is which is mm -hmm. very nice. Um, mm -hmm. You know, instead of a lead magnet. Right, which is like, what do you, what do we man? What like lead magnet? What are what, what we man? Like if your clients are metal. What are they? Was <laughs> yeah, what are, I have this, you know, this sucking effect. I the see sucking it's effect, like, oh, and we're it's just sort of like, like sucking everybody. Else. Also, it all it always assumes that the the audience and clients are like automatons, like they're they're not yeah. thinking and soulful beings. Yeah. It's like yeah, it's it's always very one dimensional how we treat them. Whereas, I think that um, that's yeah. a big part of of both of our works. I feel that um, we need to give clients the power back, or we need to treat them again like smart human beings that they are, right? And yet, marketing has done so much damage over the last ten years of of yeah, kind of like 
treating humans as if they were stupid. So we can lie and, you know, cheat in all our marketing and they're not going to notice. But of yeah. course they notice, right? Course they they notice. do notice. Thankfully so now we have options. Marketing, yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 I, I'm sorry, it's, I didn't cut, mean to cut you off, but yeah. Yeah, it, it just shows that that there's no surprise why marketers have like one of the least trust, right, in all the professions. It's it's because we have abused people's trust and and now it's time to restore that and and bring back the authenticity and the the transparency and all of those things. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so interesting because I, I feel like um when I use the word authentic tick or we talk about authenticity um some people are authentically immature you know, or like or authentically <laughs> still we might say young and um, you know it's like they not not literally for age but just in terms of their 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 development of their psychology to the point where they understand oh it's not just about me um it's about we back to your commune days right? <laughs> or like like but it's it's about like um we we make each other better with our actions or we make each other more isolated or more um yeah avoidant resistant and anyway so i i long story short i really admire what you're doing and um celebrate it so um tell us about so there's a lot more by the way for these seven p's you obviously have you know content about this stuff and um you know i'll i'll link to your website your linkedin etc below so people can go and take a look and you have such rich blog posts um that people should look at um but i want you to tell us about you have a workshop coming up about storytelling mm -hmm. this yeah. relates to what how we started this conversation so tell us about that yeah thank you i, I just also quickly want to mention the last p uh, which is partnership which I remember, um, I think either was in a blog post or in one of your books, you you also say, you know, partnerships or collaboration, I think you you used is like such a big thing for us entrepreneurs. And it, it goes together with the isolation that you mentioned before. And that that applies as well to entrepreneurs, right? So we really need to uh, work together more often um, as entrepreneurs. And so that's exactly what I'm doing with the these workshops. And uh, this time I found uh, a storytelling expert that I'm, yeah, just really thrilled with. And I had her on my podcast. Her name is Hilary Rea. And she has this different approach to storytelling. I got kind of tired of the same old you know, the hero's journey storytelling approach where everybody has to be a hero. And I kept thinking, I, I'm not a hero. I don't have a hero story. So, well, you know, what's my story? What am I going to say? It's, nothing's interesting. And so Hillary really also kind of says, you know, you don't have to be a hero. You don't have to have a PhD or a master's, but we, what you do need to find out is is your core story and how that relates to your people right so that there is this resonance and and that's not always easy we hear that so often always tell your story but it's not always so easy and so, so that's why we're putting together this workshop because it helps to um actually we'll have someone walk you through it but then also what we always do on, on our workshops and again, collaboration is we put people into breakout rooms of three and then they give each other feedback on that, you know, for this workshop here on the, on the life story, the five word life story. And that is just so helpful. And yes, it's a little bit, you know, maybe outside of our, or stretching a little bit of our comfort zone. But that's what we need to do as entrepreneurs, right? And it's just, it's a safe space that we create. And it's, yeah, it's super helpful to have these collaborations in a mini, mini format like that. That's brilliant. I love that. Um, you're deconstructing, you're demystifying the storytelling from just about the hero's journey. Yeah, it's yeah. that is also quite one dimensional when it uh, it's supposed to apply to everybody. Applies it to starts certain, to be boring. People. It's yeah. like oh yeah yeah, this yeah. Again. <laughs> that's right yeah. that's right. It, it applies in some circumstances for sure and some people for sure. But I love that you bring more richness into it. So <clears throat> there will be a link below. Um, 
for Thank people you. to check it out. And uh, what else, when, anything else you want to uh, share and words of encouragement as we complete this uh, conversation? Yeah, maybe I can just share the humane marketing circle because sure, that's yeah, please really do. my mm -hmm. life's work. So that's our community where we look at what works in marketing. So it's not a place where I teach, which which is what you're very good at. But what we do is we just come together and talk and have conversation about what works for us in marketing and what we see. And I, and, and I have people in there who are like, oh, I love what George is doing. And so it's, it's really good to just have these conversations with people and find what works for us, for each of us, right? So there's no template approach, um, no blueprint, uh, but that is so much needed right now. Again, it goes against you know, isolation, we need to be in community. So that is my life's work, this um, humane marketing circle. So thanks Lovely. for letting me share that. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Well, there will be a link below as well. Thank you so much, Sarah, for uh, the Thank work that you, you do, how you do it, the um, energy and the values that you're bringing into our, our field. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me, George. Thanks.